Erasmus and alcohol are rarely not used in the same sentence. And because of this, many people feel like they have to drink to actually have a good time abroad. And even think it's almost impossible to have just as a good time as the other people who do drink. However, I'm gonna be your hero today and explain to you why this is actually far from true and how you can even have more fun than those people who do drink. The biggest fear people who do not drink but do want to go abroad have is actually not fitting in the group very well and not making as many friends as the other people do. And to be very honest with you, this is definitely a fair concern and yes it might happen because we all know those people who make fun of other people. However, if you do not pay attention to these kinds of people, those people will slowly stop paying attention to you and you can just go on and do your own thing. So make sure to just do you and don't worry about them. And if there happen to be people like that, really try to avoid them as they will probably spoil your evening. And if you do happen to see these people over and over again on the activities you go to, maybe try and host things yourself. Then you can pick the people who come and you don't have to worry about people like that. This way you can also choose your own group of people who are hopefully a little bit like-minded or just don't judge you at all. In the beginning this will probably be very difficult, but the more you do this, the easier it will get and the tighter your connection with those people will be. This way you will filter the pricks and you will end up having a friend group where you feel comfortable and you pretty much don't have to worry about you not drinking. But it should definitely not stop there. Next up, you should really try to expand your network. This can very easily be done by doing things like joining associations. Some associations to look at are ESN, ISN, or maybe some local associations your school has to offer. They host trips, activities, and they aren't always drinking related. And even if they are drinking related, you can still go for fun. And wherever you are, be social. This can be very difficult for people who aren't very extroverted, but just saying hi to people you haven't seen before can easily break the ice and make it a lot more likely for them to even start talking with you the next time you see them. I would also definitely recommend you to go to as many activities as you can, even if they are drinking related. And one of the activities I think is most important when you're in a group with a lot of people who do like to party and drink is to actually go to the pre-drinking events. And yes, this might sound weird because a pre-drinking event is literally there to start drinking before going to a party. But I honestly feel like those events are actually more important than the event that follows afterwards. And this is because during the pre-drinking event, people actually talk to each other. Because if you go to a party and everything is loud around you, you're not really going to have deep conversations with the people next to you, are you? Of course, the smoking area can always be used for that. But as a non-smoker, you usually don't really go there very often. And yes, during those pre-drinking events, the pressure to drink will be quite high. But if you just do you and tell them you're just there to be social, the chance of them making a problem out of it is almost zero. And the people will even respect you for it because, you know, people like social people. And if you're there purely to be social, at least I think it's a very cool thing to do. And since those events usually last up until like 10, 10, 30, maybe 11, sometimes a bit later, you can perfectly go home afterwards and still get a nice amount of sleep. So you'll be fresh the day after without having lost many brain cells due to the alcohol. And waking up without a hangover is also a perk I'd say. So it actually doesn't even sound that bad now. <laughs> During my stay, I actually had quite some people who didn't drink and none of my friends really ever made a problem out of it. But the main reason they kind of ended up falling out of the group is just because we didn't see them often. And yes, our group was quite party intensive, if, if that's even English. But if they would have just joined at the pre-drinking events, they would have been so much closer with the group and they wouldn't have been left out. Of course, they would have missed some cool stories that happened during the party or after the party, but people usually tell them afterwards anyway. And lastly, I also would really recommend you to take initiative. This is something I've talked about in previous videos as well, but this is definitely something very important in this situation. Because if you don't, the chances of activities being drinking related are going to be even higher because you don't get to decide what activities you can do. I'm not telling you to organize trips 24-7. It doesn't have to be like that. Those activities can be very easy and simple things. Think about going to the park, having a picnic, organize brunch, go to a neighboring city. You can do all these simple things that almost all Erasmus people will love. The main reason they are there is not necessarily to get wasted all the time, but it's just to have the best time possible out there. And this often means that they want to hang out with people as much as they can, which is perfect. And if you do this enough, you will quickly find the people you like the most and who are often very like-minded as well. And then you don't have to worry about the alcohol factor at all. And you can just focus on having a great time abroad, which is the most important thing in the end. And if you feel like your network is not as big as you would like it to be, you can always ask your friends to bring their friends. That way you can meet some additional people and again, get a bigger network. If you're hosting events like that regularly, the chances of you having even a tighter friend group 
are a lot higher than those people who only go and party. Because in the end, how do you get good friends? By spending a lot of time with them, talking with them, and just becoming familiar with their habits and who they are. And once you have your little gang gang, you can then start planning some bigger things. Think about visiting neighboring countries, booking Airbnbs for a couple of days. The possibilities are endless, and it's up to you to make the best out of it. So go out there and make sure to grow your network, filter those pricks, take initiative, find like-minded people, and most important of all, have an amazing time. And if you want to make sure your Erasmus goes as smooth as possible, you should really check this video out because I talk about all the mistakes that I've made and I really don't want you to make them as well.